Um, so the, the webinar will be about uh, uh, MySQL replication and we'll have a, a, an introduction um, to, uh, to the different kinds of, uh, uh, of replication that, uh, that exists in, uh, uh, in MySQL at the moment. Um, let me start my slides. I hope you can, uh, you can see this. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go through the, uh, the following, uh, uh, um, uh, overview. First, I'll do a little bit of an introduction and then I'll talk about what we uh, will talk about in this, uh, in this webinar. And then from there, we'll, uh, we'll dive in uh, deep. Um, so uh, my name is Walter Heck. I'm the founder of Holland Data. We uh, provide a, a bunch of uh, training and consulting, uh, among which uh, MySQL consulting. Um, relevant for this talk, I used to uh, uh, do a lot of MySQL consulting through a company called Open Query. It's a, a, a MySQL consulting company uh, in, uh, in Australia. And uh, I learned most of my tricks in the MySQL box uh, there and have obviously expanded from then on. Um, so uh, uh, that's what I've been. Uh, uh, that's where my uh, my uh, skills come from. I've done everything from really small to really large environments. Uh, our largest MySQL uh, replication environment is uh, running a, a Galera cluster, and it uh, currently has about uh, two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand queries per second uh, running through six uh, uh, nodes. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, this is uh, the, the, the largest we're running, and the smallest is just traditional MySQL replication, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll go through all of these uh, forms. Um, so a, a short overview of the topics that we will be uh, discussing. Uh, what is MySQL replication in the first place? Uh, I presume that uh, a lot of you will be uh, new to the field of, uh, of replication or vaguely familiar, uh, but want to learn a little bit more about how it all works. Um, so here uh, we will talk about the traditional master-slave replication, which probably most of you have, uh, have heard of, um, and a bunch of other forms of replication. There is a semi-synchronous replication, multi-source replication, multi-master replication, master-master replication, and uh, lastly we'll talk about uh, Galera. Um, so we'll go through each of these uh, uh, forms and I'll explain to you uh, what, uh, what they are and, and what the use cases are. Um, I, uh, I want to explain to you which uh, are the uh, advantages and, uh, and disadvantages. And uh, uh, then for your use case, it depends what you, uh, what you can use uh, best. Um, first, a little bit of, uh, of introduction about MySQL replication. Um, so MySQL replication is uh, uh, useful for uh, a lot of uh, different things, um, but usually people start thinking about it when they start having more queries than a single server can properly handle. Uh, this is when a web application scales or when uh, um, for, for instance, hosting providers, there are so many uh, uh, websites uh, running on a single server that it becomes uh, uh, tricky uh, to, uh, to run it all on one uh, server. Um, so usually uh, uh, most of the, the op options in, in the MySQL replication world uh, are used to scale reads. Um, which means that uh, your select queries would go to your uh, uh, slaves and your, uh, um, your updates, inserts and deletes uh, still have to go to the master first. Um, so you can scale the reads out quite uh, far with the traditional master-slave replication, um, but scaling out writes is a, uh, is a different story. We'll uh, see at the end, uh, we'll see which uh, option is, uh, is better for that. Um, luckily, though, in our uh, Web 3.0 or whatever you want to call it uh, world, the, uh, the fact is that most web applications are read heavy. That means that they are doing much, much more selects uh, than inserts or updates or deletes. Um, let's say that, for instance, uh, you have a, a social network and you have a profile page. 
the number of times that a profile page will be viewed is much higher than the number of times that somebody uh, makes a change to the uh, to the profile page. Um, so there are much more selects uh, than there are inserts, updates, or deletes. So we can uh, easily uh, move some of those uh, selects to uh, one or more uh, slaves. Um, MySQL replication on paper looks rather easy. Uh, in reality, is uh, quite uh, complicated uh, very quickly. Um, even traditional uh, replication, if you follow the instructions on an empty server, uh, it's a five minute thing to set it up. If you want to do this on an existing server that's in production, uh, things become a lot more complicated. If then that replication breaks, which it does, because it's not very, uh, not always uh, uh, bulletproof, uh, things get very complicated very quickly and you'll need some, uh, some expert knowledge on how uh, replication works in order to be able to, uh, to fix it. Um, besides uh, scaling uh, applications, uh, um, replication is all, often also used for backups and for uh, reporting. So um, uh, instead of making your backups from your production server and thereby impacting the performance, uh, it's easier to make a uh, to to create a slave uh, and create your backups from that slave. Then, uh, for instance, what you can do is stop all replication traffic on your slave, make sure that there's no more changes to the data that's on that slave, make your full backup, and then restart the, the replication again so that you have a, a full atomic backup of that, uh, of that slave. Um, another uh, um, uh, use case is uh, reporting or long-running queries. So uh, uh, often for uh, reporting, uh, um, you'll have to run queries that don't take milliseconds, but are more in the order of seconds or uh, sometimes even uh, minutes if it's a really, really heavy queries. Uh, and those queries, you are obviously also do not want to run them on your live production server. So then it also makes sense to, uh, to set up a, a replication slave. Um, obviously, you can uh, uh, combine the backups and the uh, uh, reporting on a single slave because they, uh, uh, um, the impact of the backup on the uh, performance of the slave while it's doing reporting uh, should be uh, quite low. Um, so the first uh, uh, replication mode that I want to discuss is a uh, uh, traditional uh, uh, replication. Um, traditional replication is uh, the replication that most of you have heard of. Uh, there is one master and there are one or more uh, slaves. Um, so the way uh, it works is that uh, um, on the master uh, uh, server, there is a, a thing called a, a binary log, which is basically just a log file uh, that keeps track of all the uh, uh, updates, inserts, and deletes uh, uh, that happened on that uh, on that server. It also keeps track, obviously, of the uh, changes that you make. So if you alter a table or you create a new database, that will also be written to that log. All the, all the changes that are made on the server are written to that log. Just the select queries are not making any changes on the server, so they're not written to the binary log. Um, the slaves uh, then, um, they copy the binary log from the master to their local uh, disk and, uh, and then replay that log. So they have uh, uh, the technology in them to read the changes that were written to that log and uh, um, execute those queries. Um, that sounds very simple and very, uh, uh, very good. Um, but the problem, or one of the uh, issues, is that it's asynchronous. And what does asynchronous mean? It means that when the insert happens on the master, um, the, uh, the commit uh, transaction, the commit of that transaction, will come back to, the, to your web application uh, directly. However, um, when you've inserted that record, let's say you inserted a new user on your master, uh, and your uh, your web application gets a, a, an OK back from the commit, that only guarantees that that user has been inserted on the master server. What still needs to happen is that the master needs to write that to the binary log, uh, and the slave will need to read 
uh, we'll need to copy that binary log and then execute the uh, SQL uh, before that user actually exists on the uh, slave. Um, so depending on how busy it is on your server, how many updates there are, this can take some time. It's uh, uh, supposed to be nearly direct, but you cannot guarantee it. Uh, in reality, I've seen replication fall behind minutes or even uh, hours uh, in really bad uh, cases. Um, so what happens then is that the data will look differently on your master than it does on your slaves. It will eventually be corrected when that act, when that query actually gets executed on your slave. But until that point, uh, your uh, master will look differently from your slave. So uh, one of the uh, issues is, for instance, let's say that um, you have a single uh, page where somebody created a new user account. Uh, you insert that query uh, that user on the master and then immediately uh, uh, query it back to find out what the primary key was that the output increment uh, assigned to it. Um, that qu that uh, uh, select query would normally, you would say, hey, that's a select, I can uh, point that at the slave. But if you do that, and it just so happens to be that uh, replication is uh, slow at that point, you will not get a result for the, for the record uh, that you just, for the user that you just created on the master, it will not be on the slave yet. So your code will have to be able to deal with that. And the most common option is to, uh, to send those kind of selects that happen right after an update or an insert or a delete, um, uh, to send those uh, selects to the master uh, still. Uh, because the, the, the problem is that the replication lag uh, is hard to detect properly. Um, the show slave status command on the slave itself can give you some information. Um, but unfortunately, that's not super accu accurate. It tells you uh, uh, lagging behind in seconds, uh, how far the slave is lagging behind in seconds, but the seconds are actually not uh, real seconds. They are the, uh, the difference between the timestamp of the uh, uh, latest query being executed and um, the uh, the current time, um, so that could indicate hours. While there, are in those hours since that uh, query was inserted on the master, only three queries happened, three update queries happened. So once the slave passes by that one uh, statement that makes it seem like it's hours behind, it only has to execute three statements, and it will be fully caught up. Um, so this is uh, 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 an issue where you will think it's uh, hours behind while realistically it's only seconds uh, behind. Um, so that's, there are some solutions to this problem, but it's, uh, it's not very straightforward. Um, so another challenge with uh, traditional replication is that originally it was uh, single threaded, uh, which means that uh, no matter, uh, let's say that you have 500 users connecting to your master database at the same time, and they're all making changes. Uh, those changes will be written to the binary log as a single uh, um, uh, sequential uh, uh, log, and that log will be copied to the slave and replayed there sequentially. So there is no uh, uh, multi-threaded uh, slave. Um, this was added in recent versions of, uh, of MySQL. Um, but it comes with some uh, caveats as well. Uh, so uh, what actually happens is that uh, often the uh, performance of the whole cluster uh, will uh, be impacted by the, uh, or sorry, the, the, the performance of the slaves needs to be higher than the performance of the master because the master only has to deal with writes, uh, but the slave has to deal with a, uh, um, uh, with all the writes plus all the reads that the application generates. Uh, so it's always important to have a slave that is more powerful than the master, uh, which seems uh, backwards, but it's really not. Um, having worked with the traditional replication for years, I cannot tell you how many uh, uh, sleepless nights I've had uh, where I've sat and uh, uh, tried to figure out what happened uh, where the slave stopped. Um, there's a lot of different uh, queries that you have to be careful. You can look in the in the manual for MySQL which uh, uh, simple SQL statements 
uh, can be uh, dangerous. It depends on the type of replication that you're using as well. Um, it's relatively easy to break replication, uh, at which point it will just simply stop and wait for someone to uh, manually intervene uh, and to figure out what the hell just happened and how you can fix it. Uh, and that can be uh, quite uh, um, problematic. Um, so it, it's it's really uh, uh, yeah not something that you do on the side. Uh, you need to really know what you're uh, what you're doing, especially if you care a lot about your data. Um, then in five point five, uh, my SQL five point five, they added what is called semi synchronous uh, replication. Um, and what that means is uh, the, the name is really bad. Uh, the, uh, what it means is that when you insert a record on the master, uh, the uh, insert uh, statement will not return until at least uh, uh, one slave has acknowledged uh, that the uh, insert has happened as well. So it will insert it both on the master and on at least one slave. Uh, and from there, uh, you can guarantee that the data exists in at least two places. Um, unfortunately, this is still asynchronous because it flows through traditional replication, so it might still take a minute for it to appear on the slave, and until then, your insert statement sits there and waits. Um, also, if you have multiple slaves, and uh, by default, it, uh, it only asks for acknowledgement from one slave, you don't know if that insert statement also happened on the other slaves. So you might still uh, have a select uh, right after that insert uh, that just happens to hit one of the other slaves that hasn't uh, executed the statement yet for some reason. And uh, now your data still seems to be missing even though uh, it was acknowledged. Um, so there, there's a lot of uh, caveats with the uh, 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 semi-synchronous replication, and it has more drawbacks than it has benefits. I'm personally not aware of any production users. That doesn't mean there are not people using this in production, but I'm strongly wondering uh, who is uh, uh, using this in, uh, in production at the moment. Um, the next type of replication is a multi-source replication. It's uh, uh, new in, uh, in MySQL 5.7. Uh, looks quite interesting. Um, what it allows you to do is for a single uh, slave, you can uh, um, uh, designate multiple masters. Uh, so you can, uh, um, uh, let's say that you have multiple uh, uh, databases where you're uh, applications are writing information. You can then have a single slave that replicates from all of those masters into a single uh, uh, slave, and it can be very useful for aggregate, aggregating data from uh, multiple locations. Uh, it's a bit of a specific use case where this is uh, useful because uh, one of the tricky things is that um, the databases on the masters uh, have to be named differently, so you cannot have uh, both an Olin data uh, uh, database on master one and on master two and replicate those to the slave because then there will be a clash in, uh, uh, in naming. So you have to be very careful how you uh, uh, name these things. Um, but I definitely see some uh, some use cases for, uh, for this. The only downside is that uh, 5.7 is still not uh, in, in uh, GA, general availability uh, uh, at the moment. So there is no production version of 5.7. If you're interested, though, it's uh, it's interesting to uh, to play around with multi-source replication. It's quite a, a, a nice uh, technology, uh, specifically for uh, reporting or OLAP uh, 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 use cases. Um, next up, we have multi-master replication, uh, which is also called a circular uh, uh, replication. Um, Basically, the way it works is that um, you have a ring of, uh, uh, of servers uh, where uh, server A is master to server B, server B is master to server C, and server C is master to server A. That sounds really cool because now you have three servers where you could theoretically insert uh, or update data on all three of them, uh, and the changes will be eventually made on all of them. 
Um, the only problem is that uh, the way uh, MySQL knows how to stop forwarding a query is that uh, sorry uh, is that each query um, carries with it the uh, uh, the server ID of the uh, server that it was originally uh, executed on. Um, which means that uh, let's say you execute a query on uh, server A, replication will flow, uh, will make that query flow from uh, server A to server B. It will get executed on server B as well. It'll get executed on server, uh, sorry, it'll get replicated from server B to server C, get executed on server C, and uh, server A will replicate it from server C again and see, hey, wait a second, I. I was the originating server of this uh, query, so uh, uh, I don't need to execute it. The problem comes in uh, when uh, um, you have three of those servers and server A dies in between the time that it originally executes the server, uh, the query, and uh, um, uh, uh, the time that it comes back to server A. If that uh, fails, if the server fails in the meantime, you can have uh, events circling uh, around replication forever. Um, there are many other ways in which this can break. Uh, it's a very much a uh, try, don't try this at home uh, kind of thing, uh, except for with uh, two masters where it's acceptable if you know what you're doing and uh, can control uh, how the, uh, the application uses those uh, to masters. Um, so that's actually the next form of replication that I wanted to talk about. It's the master-master replication. Um, it is a version of multi-master replication. So uh, in this case, we only have two servers where server A is a master to server B and server B is a master to server A. Uh, so events will uh, uh, circle between those two servers as well. Um, in theory, you could write to both masters as long as you write to different parts of the database and make sure that uh, uh, the primary keys are not the same. There are specific settings where you, that you can use to make this happen. Um, but it's uh, 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 not uh, uh, super straightforward, so you have to be careful about what you're doing. Um, a more uh, uh, common scenario is to write to just one server uh, and read from either both or just that one master also. Um, and then uh, uh, have a failover situation where if the active master dies, you automatically switch your application over to your passive master. Um, some people do this manually, but obviously that kind of beats the purpose of, uh, of high availability. Um, so you want to maybe look at uh, doing this automatically. Um, so that's uh, uh, um, one thing that a, 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 a older uh, tool that was used for a lot of uh, high availability setups uh, uh, could could do this thing automatically, um, where it used virtual IPs to move uh, the connections from one server to another. Uh, this tool is called MMM for MySQL. Um, it's not recommended to use that if you if you're not using it already because it hasn't received any updates and close to three years now, and it has some uh, edge cases where it's uh, uh, failing, um, and it's failing in mysterious ways. Uh, so uh, um, it's worked well for us in, in a number of uh, uh, environments, but I wouldn't recommend anyone to start using it now because there are simply better options. Um, if you have a master-master replication uh, uh, and you use this uh, active ma passive master uh, setup that I just described, um, it's very common to also want to have slaves to scale out your reads. Uh, if you want to do that, um, you will have to uh, uh, figure out how to uh, fail over the slaves to the new master when the active master dies. You cannot just simply uh, uh, point the slave at the other master because the other master might not have the exact same data as the uh, the master that just died uh, because of the uh, synchronous replication. You cannot guarantee that, especially in uh, um, how to say that stressful situations. It's very common that the uh, um, uh, the the binary log 
on the one master is not equal to the binary log on the other master. So you have to manually figure out what that uh, what that setting needs to become, uh, and that's really rough to do, especially because you're in a failover situation. So you want to do things in less than a few seconds instead of having to figure out for half an hour what the settings need to be exactly. So you want to automate that. And some of the tools that can help with that are uh, MMM for MySQL. Another tool is uh, MHA. Um, and there are a bunch, a bunch of other uh, uh, tools as well that can do similar uh, things. Um, the last type of uh, replication I want to talk about is uh, um, become much more uh, popular in the last couple of years. Um, uh, a lot of OpenStack installations, for instance, use uh, Galera. Um, Galera is a, uh, uh, a library written by a company called, it's now called Galera Cluster. Um, and they have written a library that sits on top of traditional MySQL. And uh, it, it is compiled into MySQL and it, it uses fully synchronous replication. Um, what happened is that uh, both Percona server as well as MariaDB have released versions uh, of their uh, um, distribution with the uh, Galera library uh, implemented. Um, so there is both a Percona ExtraDB uh, cluster, uh, or short uh, for short, it's called PX, PXC, and there is MariaDB uh, uh, Galera. Uh, which has the Galera library uh, compiled into MariaDB. Um, both are good options to, uh, to look at. Um, Galera is what is called fully synchronous replication, which means that if you uh, uh, send an insert to any server in the cluster, it will only come back to your application after uh, uh, all the nodes have confirmed that they can execute the statement. They don't actually execute the statement, they just confirm uh, and, and reserve the, uh, the um, ability to, uh, uh, to execute that statement. Um, what that means is that if your insert returns, you can immediately select it from any of the other uh, nodes in the cluster uh, and it's just there. Um, that sounds very great. Uh, one of the first concerns many people have is what about performance impact? Uh, because now I have to wait until all of my uh, nodes have executed this uh, statement. Uh, in reality, uh, in a, if you have a fast local uh, network, that's uh, uh, not really a concern. We're doing, uh, as I said before, on uh, reasonably commodity hardware. Um, we're doing uh, 250 or 350, I'm not entirely sure, 1,000 queries per second uh, easily. Uh, and uh, uh, so the performance is, is, is fine uh, uh, if you uh, take into account uh, some of the specifics. Um, one of the great advantages of, uh, of Galera is that it automatically repairs uh, servers that go down. So if, a, if one of the nodes in your cluster goes down and it comes back up, uh, it will. Uh, it has a cache that it can use to repair itself, and if that cache is not big enough, so if if it's been down for too long, um, uh, it will say, "Okay, I cannot uh, reliably guarantee that the data I have is still correct, so I'll copy all the data from a different uh, node in the cluster." It donates uh, one of the other nodes donates its data to uh, this server that was down. Um, the downside is that the donor uh, uh, obviously uh, has a performance impact as well and should preferably be uh, uh, taken out of the cluster as well. Um, so uh, when a node goes down and comes back up, it will take effectively another node out of your cluster. So um, if you have a minimum of three nodes um, and one of them goes down, uh, it comes back up, it takes another node out of the cluster, so now all of a sudden you have one node left. Uh, for that reason, it works better if you have uh, uh, a larger number of uh, nodes. Um, you can use uh, five, six, seven, uh, depends a little bit on, uh, on what, you, uh, what your requirements are and what your budget is also. Um, 
the beauty of uh, fully synchronous replication is that uh, you can write to any node in the cluster uh, without having to worry that you're getting conflicts on other nodes. The only uh, um, uh, area where you need to be uh, uh, careful is uh, when you have high concurrency uh, uh, traffic going to the same part of your database. So let's say that you, ha you have a lot of queries that are updating your user records because you keep the last activity, for instance, and uh, they always update the same records and you have uh, hundreds or thousands of connections that are specifically updating the same few records. You have to be careful uh, to not create uh, conflicts because uh, if there is a real conflict, um, one of the connections will get a deadlock uh, uh, error and your application needs to be able to deal with that. It's not a problem. You can just retry the, uh, the uh, uh, transaction right after that, but you need to be uh, uh, prepared that it can happen. Um, in order to re reliably uh, uh, use Galera from a web application, you, uh, you need some kind of a proxy in front of it so that if a node dies, you can stop sending queries to it. Uh, we use uh, uh, HAProxy, which is a great lightweight proxy with a simple web interface that allows you to uh, put a lot of traffic through, uh, through it uh, without any, uh, any problems. Um, and we use a simple uh, monitoring uh, uh, scripts to uh, uh, make sure that when a node is uh, uh, dropped out of the cluster, it will actually also become unavailable by, for the proxy. Um, so that's uh, uh, the uh, MySQL Galera uh, uh, replication. And um, uh, yeah, the, the only downside of Galera is that uh, you need three nodes. Realistically, you need four or five. Uh, in a high availability uh, setup, if you uh, if you wish to uh, be a bit uh, certain of your uh, performance uh, when a, when a node goes down, um, and they all have a full copy of the data. So if you have a ginormous database, it's not really uh, useful because you'll need to have a full copy of that database in all locations. Um, this is actually also a problem with traditional replication. Um, except that a lot of people are using traditional replication with one master and one slave. Uh, with Galera, that's not really recommended. Um, so uh, be aware of that if you're looking at Galera in, in, in smaller uh, environments. Um, that kind of uh, concludes the uh, um, overview of the uh, uh, different flavors of uh, replication. Um, and uh, uh, with that, I, uh, I'm finished with the, uh, uh, the webinar. Um, I'll uh, be taking questions. Uh, I just also want to mention that we're hiring if you're interested uh, in things like Node.js, MySQL, OpenStack, uh, Puppet. Uh, if these things interest you, we're looking for trainers and consultants uh, both in Europe and in Asia. So uh, feel free to uh, send an email to uh, jobs at uh, And um, here are my, uh, my contact details. Um, you can reach me anytime at walterheck at olandata.com or on Twitter at, uh, at walterheck. Um, feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to uh, answer any uh, questions you uh, might have. Uh, if you have in-depth technical questions, I don't mind answering them, but you're most likely better off uh, sending them to the MySQL uh, user email list or to the IRC channel, simply because there are hundreds of people there answering questions and I have a limited amount of time. Uh, myself, so you'll probably get a faster answer uh, on those uh, uh, channels than you'll uh, get from me. But you're still welcome to send questions straight up to me. Um, that kind of concludes my uh, presentation. Um, I uh, uh, I will uh, um, uh, uh, take uh, uh, questions. Um, I see there are two questions uh, 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 right now. Um, che Muhammad uh, says Ubuntu not supported. Uh, let me. It's unclear what you uh, uh, mean by this. Uh, probably this uh, you uh, you have had the question during one of my uh, slides. Um, I'm not sure uh, uh, what your question is. Um, I'll write an answer. Uh,
I'll write an answer to everyone. Uh, so we can, uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, send them. Um, there's one more uh, um, uh, question. Um, uh, Krishna is uh, asking uh, for semi semi-synchronous replication. Um, how uh, about the delay of the acknowledgement? Um, how bad can it get? So the, the thing is that one of the slaves will have to, uh, at least by default, you can uh, change the number, but uh, uh, by default, one of the slaves will have to uh, acknowledge that it, in, uh, that it executed the statement. Uh, how bad can it get? Pretty bad. If the load on your server is already high uh, and there is network lag, uh, all of these things uh, seem like an unlikelihood, but uh, in reality, I've seen it many, many times. Um, you can easily uh, uh, have uh, uh, quite uh, seconds is uh, is not uh, uncommon at all, especially if you have longer running queries. So if you have heavier queries that need to execute uh, on the uh, slaves, um, the replication there will stall for a little bit and it might easily take a few seconds and that can be already too much for uh, your uh, single query to uh, uh, um, to be waiting because uh, really you're serving a web page so you don't have a couple of seconds you have 100 milliseconds per query at the most uh, maybe a little bit more in in specific cases but it's it's uh, uh, quite unlikely that you will want that so uh, any delay is basically too much uh, and semi-synchronous replication doesn't really um, uh, solve your problem uh, Martono Vibovo, Vibovo uh, asks, uh, what is MySQL uh, replication type for write-heavy databases? Um, if you have write-heavy databases, uh, things like uh, logging, for instance, which doesn't really belong in a database in the first place, but there are always uh, write-heavy. Monitoring is a uh, write-heavy, for instance. Um, the, the, the best solution I've seen is, uh, uh, is Galera in that case, because you can actually uh, distribute your writes uh, to multiple nodes in the cluster. Uh, it's still not ideal, uh, but it is uh, the best uh, solution, the better solution than uh, than traditional uh, uh, MySQL replication. You'll have to do some, uh, um, uh, how to say that, uh, some testing to see if it uh, if it will work for you. Um, but especially if you have a write-heavy database where you where you are in control of the application code and you are able to um, uh, make sure that um, uh, different parts of the application can uh, uh, write to different parts of the database, uh, then uh, Galera can be a, a great uh, use case. Uh, any use case of multi-source replication in addition to reporting is uh, Krishna's uh, question. Um, There could be, you could, for instance, uh, think about backups. Uh, let's say that you have multiple database servers that are serving different clients. Uh, uh, and so each database server should be uh, uh, available to only certain uh, uh, clients. Um, but you internally want to make one uh, backup. Uh, you could have uh, all of these uh, servers replicate to a single uh, 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 machine and make your backups there, uh, which means that you'll have backups of all of your databases at the same time. Uh, those two uh, things are the, the biggest uh, use cases. Um, the, uh, the downside is that uh, multi-source replication uh, is still not in a, in a production version of MySQL, so it's still something that's, uh, that we're waiting for uh, uh, implementation or for release into, into the real world, and then we'll have to see what kind of creative use cases people come up with. Um, that's all the questions in the uh, questions uh, board. Um, if anybody else has a, uh, uh, has a question, you can uh, uh, press the little button that uh, makes you put up your hand, and I'll be uh, uh, happy to, uh, uh, to connect you to the microphone also, uh, so you can uh, um, uh, ask a question. Um, If not, then uh, um, I think we uh, we are uh, done with this uh, webinar. Um, ah, Joseph Basri has a question. 
Um, have you ever implemented MySQL replication ring such as three and each server locate at a different uh, country? Um, this is something that's very tricky with uh, MySQL. Um, uh, we have tried it and uh, as long as you can guarantee the stability of the network connection between them and the security, uh, it's workable, um, but uh, it's, it depends. If you need high availability, uh, sorry, high performance, it becomes a problem quickly simply because of the round trip uh, time uh, between uh, each uh, country. Um, uh, so obviously uh, uh, companies like Facebook are doing this uh, and uh, it is work it is you can implement it properly uh, but it's uh, it's not a very uh, simple uh, use case um, it might be interesting to know that Galera uh, supports having uh, a replication over a wide area network um, so what you can do there is you can have a uh, Galera cluster in each country so you have three nodes in each country that are uh, um, of which one node uh, will be part of the global uh, cluster. So that uh, um, uh, when an insert happens in, let's say, Germany, uh, it'll uh, be acknowledged by uh, the UK and the Netherlands before it returns, but not on all servers in the UK and all servers in the Netherlands. It will just be acknowledged that it is uh, that it will be uh, possible, and, and this is a supported uh, situation. But again, um, uh, latency becomes a uh, a problem. If you want more information on that, you can uh, you, you can ask us, and we, we, we can uh, we can talk more in depth about what your uh, requirements are and how uh, how we could possibly uh, help you. Um, a percentage share of each replication technology, uh, just approximately, uh, Krishna is asking. It's hard to say. Um, Multi-source replication obviously is not in production uh, uh, MySQL yet. Um, we see uh, traditional replication is usually what people start with, one master and one slave, uh, until they uh, run into uh, significant problems with that. That's uh, fine, so that's quite often used. Um, Multi-master replication, uh, not so common, luckily, because any web page that you read about it will clearly say, don't do this unless you have a really, really, really good reason for it. And even then, you should probably not do it. Master-master uh, replication is uh, quite common in more high-performance uh, setups and high-availability uh, setups. Um, but I feel that the last few years, the... Um, uh, popularity of Galera has increased uh, significantly uh, because it's been proven in, in high performance production uh, uh, environments and it just simply uh, works very well. Uh, the auto repairing of slaves is really nice. Um, uh, the, uh, the fact that it's uh, uh, fully synchronous uh, works out really nice if you have a fast network uh, connection between the nodes. So uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, Galera will, in the next few years, uh, become the de facto uh, replication uh, uh, method because it's fully open source and it matches really nicely with, uh, uh, with MySQL. I see Krishna raised his hand. Let me give you a microphone. Hi, Krishna, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Is my voice audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, want to, uh, I have read many articles regarding uh, this uh, Galera cluster. So many times I've seen that for Kona recommend that we should have some specific hardware for, uh, for an example, Dolphin, uh, uh, either, either, uh, network cards, so, uh, so uh, how much that helps uh, into the Galera? Um, so um, I'm going to mute you again uh, until I'm done with my answer because I can uh, hear myself through the uh, uh, through your speakers. So I'll, I'll unmute you once I'm done with my answer, uh, so you can ask more questions if you have them. Um, so Krishna was asking. Uh, um, 
he has read many articles and uh, uh, the question is um, network equipment how much does it matter um, let me tell you uh, that um, the speed of the uh, link matters uh, in two ways first of all the the latency uh, matters between the servers because simply a commit will not return until it's been uh, uh, acknowledged by all the nodes in the cluster so effectively the slowest network connection between your uh, the node that is executing the statement and all the other nodes uh, the slowest network connection will be uh, the uh, the speed of your uh, uh, query um, the other thing is um, when uh, a node uh, uh, drops out of the cluster and it comes back into the cluster uh, if it has fallen <coughs> sorry if it has fallen too far behind it will need to copy all of its data from another node. There is no such thing as, oh, I see that I uh, missed a few users here, uh, so I'll just uh, copy only the users. Um, that only happens if the cache was uh, large enough, but if the cache was not large enough, it will have to copy every single bit of data from another server. So uh, in our uh, uh, largest environment, the, the database is not luckily not that large. It's 100, 150 gigabytes uh, around there. Um, but all of those 150 gigabytes will have to be copied over the network. And it, uh, for as long as that takes, uh, both the donor node, the donating node, and the receiving node will be still offline so you want that transfer to complete as fast as possible uh, originally we were using 100 megabit network which made it take somewhere in the neighborhood of two hours to transfer all that data and then we changed it to gigabit network uh, and uh, all of a sudden it was 20 minutes uh, so the faster you can copy all of that data uh, and the faster your network is uh, the the better it will be for uh, for galera I've unmuted you, uh, Krishna. Do you, does that answer your question? Yes. Great. All right. I don't see any other hands. Uh, Krishna, if you don't have any other questions, then uh, I think this will be uh, the uh, conclusion of our, uh, our webinar for today. Yeah. Great. I'll uh, um, I'll send a recording to uh, uh, to everyone uh, after I uploaded it to uh, to YouTube. And, uh, um, and then uh, if you have any questions, you're uh, welcome to, uh, uh, to send me an email anytime. Thank you very much.